Here's an example two. So the question is use the substitution x is equal to two sine theta to calculate this integral. So the integral is the integral of the root of four minus x squared with respect to x, okay? So again, um, if you have a trigonometric substitution, you're going to be using a trigonometric identity at some stage in order to help you with the problem. So let's have a go at this problem. Step number one, our substitution is x is equal to two sine theta, okay? And in step number two, we need to differentiate. So dx by d theta. And when we differentiate sine, you'll get cos. So it's two cos theta, okay? So we could write this as dx is equal to two cos theta d theta. So this is where we're gonna stop and have a think because in our integral, we're gonna replace dx by two cos theta d theta and the x over here that will replace by two sine theta, okay? So that takes us to step number three. So by substitution, so let's rewrite this integral that we have. So in this case, as we discussed, dx is two cos theta d theta. So I'm gonna write that two, the constant outside of the integral keeping the cos theta d theta inside the integral so you can only take constants outside the integral so i took that's two outside the integral so that is dx replaced so let's check that and we're left with the root of four minus and x is two sine theta so we're gonna have two sine theta, and don't forget to square, okay? So x has been replaced two. So let's check that. So let's simplify this. So we're gonna have two uh, into the integral of the root four minus, and two sine theta squared is four sine squared theta, okay, into the cos theta d theta. Now what I'm gonna do at this stage, I'm gonna, since I have two fours here which are common to both of these terms, I'm gonna take a common factor of four outside of this root sign. So if I take a common factor of four outside the root, the root of four is two, and two combined with this two will give me a four, okay? So if I take a common factor of four once again, outside of the root, the root of four is two, and that two together with this two here gives me a four, okay? Into the root of one minus sine squared theta, okay? With the cos theta, d theta. Now that takes us to step number four and step number four is the application of an identity. So remember what I said earlier, at some stage we're going to be using a trigonometric identity. So we need a trigonometric identity specifically in order to handle this root term here, the root of one minus sine squared theta. So I'm going to be using this identity, cos squared plus sine squared theta is equal to one, because if we rearrange, cos theta would be the root of one minus sine squared theta. Okay? So if I replace the root of one minus sine squared theta by cos theta, we're gonna be integrating four into the integral of the cos, when you replace the root of one minus sine squared theta by cos theta, cos times another cos is cos squared theta with respect to theta, okay? Now remember, 
in a video that I did on the integral of trigonometric functions, if you want to integrate cos squared or sine squared, you need to use a double angle identity for cos. Okay, so we need the double angle uh, formula for cos 2 theta here, and the formula that we're going to be using is cos 2 theta is 2 cos squared theta minus 1. Okay, so that is going to be the identity in order to help us with this cos squared integral. This is the identity that we're going to be using to integrate cos squared. So if I rearrange for cos squared, 2 cos squared theta is cos 2 theta plus 1. And if I divide both sides by 2, cos squared theta will then be 1 over 2 cos 2 theta plus 1 over 2. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to replace the cos squared theta within our integral by 1 over 2 or half cos 2 theta plus half. Okay, so let's do that. So we have 4 outside integration and but when we do the replacement it's half cos 2 theta plus half. So let's integrate. So it's going to be half, so half is a constant. When we integrate cos it's sine, so it's plus sine. So it's sine 2 theta divided by 2 okay plus integrating half with respect to theta is theta over 2 since we have an indefinite integral indefinite meaning an integral without limits add a c so add a constant of integration okay so um, if we continue so let me multiply out so when we multiply out this is what we're going to have so the 1 over 2 times this 2 in the bottom is uh, 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 times 4 will give us the sine 2 theta, okay, term which remains. Plus 4 times half is 2, so 2 theta plus c. The next step is step number uh, 5. And in step number five, what we need to do is we need to write our answer back in terms uh, of x. So remember, in order to write our answer in terms of x, we're going to be using our substitution, which is x is equal to 2 sine theta. However, our answer as it stands has a sine 2 theta. So we need to write sine 2 theta in terms of sine theta in order to write our answer back in terms of x okay so let's let's look at this sine 2 theta term now remember the double angle formula for sine so sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta okay so in this case, we're almost there, okay? However, we need to write cos theta in terms of sine theta. And if we go back, we have an expression for cos in terms of sine. So specifically, if we go back to this step over here, when we rearrange this identity, cos theta is the root of one minus sine squared theta. So let me use this, in this case over here, so in this case, we're going to have 2 sine theta. And as we've seen earlier, cos theta is the root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So into cos theta, which is the root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So now in this case, I've written sine 2 theta in terms of sine theta. Let, let me rewrite this answer here. So sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta into the root of 1 minus sine squared theta plus the 2 theta plus the c. Okay. Now, 
let's write this back in terms of x, okay? So let's use our substitution. So the substitution is x equals two sine theta. So since x is equal to two sine theta, sine theta, when we rearrange, is x over two. So now we can replace all of the sine theta terms by x over two. And how about this theta? So if I go one stage further, theta would be the inverse sine of x over two. Okay, so uh, let me repeat. So the sine theta is gonna be replaced by x over two and theta in this case will replace that by the inverse sine of x over two. So in the last stage, we're gonna have two into sine theta, sine theta is x over two, okay? Uh, into the root, so into the root of one minus sine squared, so sine is x over two, so that makes sine squared x over two squared, okay? Plus two, and theta is the inverse sine of x over two. So the inverse sine of x over two plus c. Okay, so we can simplify this. So this two and this two can cancel, giving us a final answer of x into the root of one minus x over two squared is x squared over four, okay? Plus two sine inverse, x over two, add c. So that is our final, final answer uh, to this uh, substitution problem, okay? So here are the steps involved with this substitution problem. And remember, if you have a trigonometric substitution, at some stage of your method, you'll be using trigonometric uh, identities. Okay, so please bear that in mind. Okay. So that ends these examples and that ends the video, sadly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated and I hope to see you again. Thank you.